Hello and welcome to part three of programming the next steps. We're here, we're going to look at persisting our models to a backing database store. So to do this, what we're going to get started is use a library in Python called SQL Alchemy. So go to our requirements and we're just going to add SQL Alchemy. And it should already be installed on my side. Uh, the way to do that is Python M pip install me and yes it's already installed so we're now going to start looking at our models and see how we're going to create our internal schema it's going to close our requirements and what we're going to do is create a python module called schema that's going to hold uh, the ta the definition of our tables. Add this. So then, let's say import SQL Alchemy. It's important to note that we are separating the models we create in our SQL Alchemy from the models we create uh, in general. And the reason why is a lot of times it's useful to have a pure Python based model um, that isn't necessarily backed to anything because it can be painful using some, you know, object relational mapping uh, to use them as generic like Python classes. Because under the hood, tools like Django or SQL Alchemy are doing some weird stuff um, on the fly. Um, so first we're going to just create a class and then we're just going to create a domain rates model. This will be the SQL model for domain rates. So first we're going to uh, import the declarative schema base let's see and that needs to be a from and then we're going to have our schema base be our declarative face. And we'll just inherit from that. And so all of our models will just import this. And now for our fields. So for our domain rate, and we'll make one like this singular. So the different fields we can have is the domain name and that is going to be a string and we'll uh, fix the imports later. There's going to be the rate that can be fractional so it'll be a uh, float right, limit. We'll just call this limit. And then if we go and import, uh, SQL Alchemy import column string and float. And this will be our base class. So next up, what we're going to do is create a class to help us manage our database connections. So what we're going to do that is not use uppercase class. And we're just going to be, we can just call this whatever we want. Um, and it doesn't matter. So the things we're going to want to have defined are the SQL Alchemy engine. And this is going to be private. Uh, 
and it doesn't need to be set to anything. And then the other thing is going to be the db connect string. That's also going to be none. And then when we want to actually go get the engine, it is a class method. So let's just define use class. We're going to just uh, use a singleton instance. So we're going to return the SQL L for me to be engine. And we'll do this for say if our engine is none, we're going to instantiate our engine here. So the way we're going to do that is say this engine equals. Then we're going to want to do create engine. And we're going to need to pass it in some arguments. But first, uh, we'll just finish this function. And we will also import our create engine. Now for getting the connection string, I'm going to create another class method that will do that. And to do this, what we'll do is we'll say connect string is none. We'll do the same singleton. And we'll set this to some value. And that value is going to be defined. All uh, right, I believe it's OS. It's OS .environ db connect connection. And then we're just going to always return by default our connection string. So what we're the way we're going to configure how we connect to our database is through an environment variable. This way, in different deployments or in testing, we can use a quick and dirty SQLite database or connect to an already instantiated database. We're not going to make that decision here in the code just yet. The only thing we will have to worry about are how, uh, what libraries we connect to um, or what libraries involve. So SQLite should be um, installed by default on any normal Python distribution, but for uh, using something like Postgres or MySQL, that will require a little bit of extra work to make sure that those libraries are perfectly set up. Um, MySQL is, you know, very fun for you go install the library and for some reason it doesn't work. But that's not what we're worried about here. So last thing last is we're just going to say the documentation. And in testing, we'll just use SQLite because it's nice and easy. But that's not that's not scalable in a multi-threaded um, situation. Or if we're going to be running in containers, uh, SQLite is also not an optimal solution. So finally, The last thing to do with our database manager is for managing sessions. So we fetch our so we say return db session and just create a, another uh, singleton variable. So say session maker. Uh, say song and dance is none. We'll just instantiate our session maker. And that will be SQL Alchemy session maker, which is, I think, just all lowercase. And then the general case, 
do is return the session maker uh, like that. So go up here, say from SQL Alchemy RM, import our session maker. All right. Then we'll want to bind to our engine. Luckily, we already have a function for that. So anytime we call this, we'll get a brand new session. Now, for our models, you no longer are going to want to set them uh, accordingly as an internal variable. So the first thing we want to do is to be able to query uh, our models. So we don't want to do this. What we're going to want to do is from source.models import schema and then here we can uh, use the schema. So schema dot db get session and now we can use the session for our querying and for now we're just going to create a session run our code commit and then just drop our session so also I need to quickly remember we want to make sure that all of our models have been uh, created if they haven't been done so already. So to do that, uh, we're going to take our base schema and then metadata. And then I believe it is create all. And then we'll use our engine. So instantiate our models with the db connection. Now when we go over to here, we're going to use our session for querying. So session dot query and that's going to be a the model schema domain rate model and how we're going to do this is we're going to filter just by name so our name is domain name and it's going to be given by the parameter we just passed in save that as a result and for now we're just going to return the result we're going to try the same thing it has uh, so if we look here don't need you so that domain rate model count and we don't use filter by for now so 
So we're going to say is return result greater than zero. So if we return zero, that means we had nothing that matched. And if we uh, successfully, if we return one, then this will return true, meaning that there is a matching record. Finally, here what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new uh, model. So domain rate schema dot domain rate model to do that we are going to say domain equals domain and limit rate limit is limit We could do say domain that had domain rate, and we're gonna say session dot. All right. So before we get to testing out uh, our code, the next thing we're gonna want to do is make is to assert the case um, that we have our environment variable set. So to do that, we can say try, and then accept here and say just for now print error uh, so we need to set our database connection string and then os.abort yep. and just shut down the program so in practice, this is going to happen as soon as we uh, load this up. Uh, so this shouldn't be encountered unexpectedly. Um, so if we want to go and try to run our code, go to Python, run. All right. Uh, doesn't like, oh, it needs a table name. So we need to add a table name to our class. So to do that, we just put this here. Just call this domain rate. And oop. it cannot be. How do you need a primary key as well? And that can just be k equals column integer primary key equals true. And is that happy? All right. So <clears throat> we are expecting our engine to fail to create. So we are trying to create engine. Oh, we just need to actually use the connection string. This is treated as like a dictionary. Abort. Uh, actually, we don't. We're not supposed to use abort. We're supposed to use exit. And and there we go. So we need a set. So if we do sport db connection and this for now can be db uh, all 
run, uh, appears to be running. So now we just need to pass in the call the correct command. And then we're just going to say, let's just try has for example.com. And oh, yeah, we don't. We don't have one yet for has. You can try git. Uh, it does not like domain name. So, that's supposed to just be filter. Domain name. Have our domain rate model. Ah, I think I have to do this. Domain rates. So the main rate model dot right, schema if we try this. Also try this in. Ah, I have to do it in both functions. Domain rate model. Not sure why filter by doesn't work. Oh, that works. So it looks like our default has been broken. Um, that's fine. Because right now we're returning the record instead of the actual numerical value. Um, so if we want to get the actual numerical value, what we can do is do rate limit. The other thing to do is hit result is none. We can instead return the default rate. All right, so that works. And just to go back. Uh, we might want to also reference the connection. And actually, what we can do make this nice and pretty. This the name of the variable. And if we go here. Just so it's not falling off the screen, uh, because I'm using a bigger font. Everything's working again. The next question is if we want to go set the domain name. So to do that, say we're going to want to set you to 50. And now we have a new set value. So now it's persisting to the database. And we pull out our database tool. We can just look at this table. We see we have a record in our database. So that's great. So that wraps that up for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be looking to actually running some of these queries uh, and then figuring out how we're going to enforce the uh, rate limits as well.